the moment. And we can talk more about this with Chris McDonald, who's a former steel executive and is the current chief executive of the Materials Processing Institute. Um, Chris, uh, how's Liberty got this far down the line in, into this much trouble? Hi, Ramzan. Thank you for asking me on. Well, I think you've just put your finger on it, really. The Liberty's very produced very high quality steels for our aerospace sector. And we saw the big losses in Rolls Royce just announced just a couple of weeks ago. This had a major impact on Liberty's business. So it's it's not about the quality of steels they produce. I know steel probably all looks the same to people, but about two thirds of the steels that we make in the UK just didn't exist 15 years ago. It is a really high quality product. But this isn't just a thing from a few years ago. I mean, we're talking about decades in terms of the steel industry. I mean, it's a shadow of its former self, isn't it? Yeah, and I think what we need to really understand is, look, steel is a really special material. In the UK, we consume about a quarter of a tonne for every adult in the country. And for that reason, governments are generally prepared to intervene to support their steel industry. And in the UK, we've had a more hands-off approach. So we're expecting our steel sector to, to compete with other sectors that are effectively subsidised. The, the um, former president of General Motors in Europe said just, just when the British steel crisis happened that if we'd lost that company, it could have been the tipping point for automotive in the UK. And we've seen with the Suez Canal issue this week, you can't rely on global supply chains for your essential steel for medical or, or food or infrastructure. And that's why governments around the world intervene to support their steel sector. And is it going to need government support, really? Are we going to see a similar situation uh, that we saw a few years ago with British Steel, where we I, you kind of could say it was quasi-nationalised for a little while before the Chinese bought, bought the firm? Is that a, something that you could see happening with Liberty? Well, I think government have been quite clear that they will intervene. Uh, I, think, I, I think they're just waiting for their opportunity. But what I'm concerned about is, last time we saw government wait until the business fell into insolvency before they intervened. And I'm not remotely suggesting that that will happen with Liberty, but frankly, that action, whilst it helps the steel company, is too late for the supply chain. So small businesses around the country, if that were to happen with Liberty, would lose jobs, they would lose money, they would lose contracts. So if government is to intervene, I'd urge them to intervene prior to any insolvency action before it's too late for the supply chain. And the 5,000 jobs that could be under threat, I mean, there are 12 sites across the country. I mean, are some more viable than others? Could we see maybe... Uh, shutting some of the sites and keeping some going? Is, is that a, a possibility even? Well, it, it is a very large and disparate organisation, but there are key sites for aerospace in Yorkshire and Rotherham and Stocksbridge, just up the road from me in Hartlepool is a, is a site that's important for our green industrial revolution for the offshore wind sector. And in Scotland, their plants are vital for the, the new announcement of, uh, of warships to be built in the UK as well. So I think what really needs to happen is we need to look at these facilities from the point of view of our national sovereign security and think about how we can sustain them in the future. Chris McDonald from the Institute, uh, the Material Processing Institute, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you.